Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I just got back from a trip to New York City where we had one of these little mini trade shows that were put on by a group called Pepcom. I go to these several times a year and I always find some interesting stuff at these things that we usually end up bringing onto the channel for a review. But I figured I would do another update and give you a idea as to what I saw there. So we're going to start off first with something called the Godzilla 360 degree camera. This costs $229. And uh, what was interesting about this to me is that there is an SD card slot on it, and it apparently uh, will work without a monthly subscription, hence the higher price tag on the upfront. But you could uh, put this thing in the middle of your room somewhere, and it'll capture the entire room, and you can play back those videos in 360 degrees. So if somebody were to be uh, ripping off your house, you can have this one centrally located camera versus needing a bunch to uh, capture every angle of the room. I'm going to try to get one of these in for a full review and see if it actually does work without that subscription. Uh, they do offer one, of course, and that would include some of the cloud recording capabilities that uh, will give you some off-site storage of video. And Lenovo was at the show with a bunch of stuff that I haven't yet seen, and the first item that caught my eye was their mixed reality headset. Uh, this is a new Microsoft standard, but it's more or less virtual reality for a little less money than an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive. Uh, this Lenovo version, which includes the headset and uh, two motion controllers, costs around uh, $300 right now at the Microsoft Store. I believe that's a special that they're running. I think the normal price is closer to $400, and that's where uh, the Oculus just came down in price to. So it's going to be a, a pretty tough choice for a lot of folks, I think. But at $300, if you're really just curious to see how all this stuff works, it might be a little bit of a better buy initially. Uh, the optics were not as good to me as they were on the Rift or on the HTC Vive. I've used the Vive quite a bit because I own one, so that didn't impress me. But the head tracking was decent. It's actually pretty good considering there isn't any sensor uh, that it's using to pick up your location. It's using some cameras as well as just gyroscopes and whatnot to uh, do all of the motion tracking, including the uh, hand controller pickup as well. So overall, pretty decent experience. I'm going to try to get one in and do a full review on it. But again, lower hardware specs for the Windows Mixed Reality stuff and also a lower cost at this point too than the competing headsets out there. But that wasn't their only VR product they were showing off. There's another thing that they've got here, kind of a toy more than a VR headset, but it's a Star Wars experience called the Jedi Challenges, and it includes a lightsaber and a headset that you use with your smartphone, and they've got a couple of uh, games that you play with this lightsaber. I've got one coming in from them. I think it's actually waiting for me at my mailbox, so uh, we'll probably have a review of that a little later in the week. Uh, the Jedi Challenges cost $199. It includes the headset, uh, the little motion tracker that's required for it, and the lightsaber, but you do need to bring a compatible smartphone. It works with the iPhone as well as Android phones. And they also had a 12-inch version of the Yoga 720 there. Uh, we previously looked at the 13 and the 15-inch version of that laptop, but this one is a lot smaller than the 13 and is powered with a regular Intel Core processor. They're not going to the uh, Core M chips that are fanless and a little slower. This one is a, a full-blown Core processor. You can get an i3, an i5, or an i7 built into it. I think it starts at around 649 with the i3. So it'll be a pretty powerful little thin device. Uh, the only thing against it is that it does not have a Thunderbolt port. It is running just with a USB-C port, but I'll try to get one of these in because I really like the other two, and I think this one might be a, a nice little travel device. So stay tuned. We'll try to get one in. And I continue to be fascinated with people's fascination with instant photography. And uh, Kodak was there showing off three different ways to print out your photos on the go. Uh, the first item they had there was a $69 instant camera. It's not a digital camera, but just an instant camera. Uh, you snap a picture, and then a few seconds later, maybe about a minute or two later, uh, a picture will pop out the side of it. Uh, they also had a portable printer there that costs about $100 that uh, pretty much does the same thing but uses your smartphone. So you can uh, zap your pictures over to it wirelessly from your uh, phone app and then have those photos print out on these little pieces of paper. I think they have some that work as stickers as well. And what's been fascinating to me is that this is becoming really popular. Fuji's got some cameras. Uh, Polaroid is out again with some cameras as well. People must be buying these things because everyone keeps making them. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of activity at these shows around some of this stuff. Now, Kodak is not actually making this hardware. They're licensing their brand out 
uh, to companies that are doing that. But one thing that I've noticed about Kodak is that they are doing a little more protection of their own brand by uh, putting their label on things that are a little higher quality than I've seen with some of the Polaroid products that have been out there. So it's really interesting just to see uh, this instant photography thing become a thing again. They also had a higher end printer, about $140 or so, uh, that worked as a dock for your smartphone. So you could plug your smartphone into it and then run photos out from uh, the uh, connection physically to the piece of hardware. But I think that little portable printer might be uh, the more fun one to use. So those are the things that I saw at the show that were of most interest to me. There wasn't a lot at this one. It was kind of a smaller show than they uh, usually do. But uh, we will be going to CES in January, and we're going to have a lot of stuff to look at at that show. So we'll do uh, more of the dispatches that I did last year and maybe some, uh, some other stuff as well. So definitely let me know down in the comments below the things that I should be looking out for uh, when I head out to Las Vegas for that big show. So that's going to do it for my uh, Pepcom wrap-up. Stay tuned for my weekly wrap-up, which will be airing uh, tomorrow night here on the channel. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.